this is primarily what we're going to accomplish by the end of this live here. So I'm going to, of course, connect to the FortiGate, change the host name, connect, I mean, configure WAN1 and WAN2, and create an SD1 interface or SD1 zone. Uh, this is just a simple SD1. This is not going deep into connecting branches and things like that. All of that will be done in the future. So if you like those kind of videos, make sure you subscribe. And, um, and if you're watching this after uh, I was live, you can find me live anytime so if you subscribe i will uh, you get the notification when i'm live so after that we're going to have to create a rule uh i'm going to create a zone called internal i usually like to create a zone for all the vlans that want to go to the internet so internal will have a firewall rule uh opening it to the internet and then i'm going to configure the 40 link port and set the ip addresses for the 40 link port and i'm going to connect my switches and change the names of the switches create vlans and primarily for the AP VLAN, I need to make sure my wireless controller is set up. It's something that I usually do just to make sure the IP is there for the APs. And then I'm going to add my APs, create some SSIDs, and we're going to discuss a little bit about 40 link failover and security fabric with Fortinet. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and connect to our FortiGate. Just like I said, you have many ways to connect to the FortiGate. The first way is to use a console cable. I have a console cable already connected to the FortiGate right here. This is my console cable. It's connected to my desktop that is right there. So I can connect to the FortiGate using a console cable and using something like Secure CRT or Party. Let's open Secure CRT over here and I'm going to show you. So um, this is going to be my connection to the FortiGate. It's already there. It's up, as you can see. And let me show you the the settings that you need to configure because it's also different from what you need for the switch. This is what we need for the 40 gate. So once you have your, your COM port, once you know what it is, you need to set the board rate to 9600, the data bit to zero, parity none, stop bit to one. This is for the 40 gate. But if you are connecting to the 40 switch, you need to do this, and let me show you the properties for the switch. For the switch, it looks like this. The board rate needs to change from 9600 to 115,200. This is for the switch, so you can see me switch this cable to the switch without any problem, because they have, uh, when I go to the switch, I just change the window and launch a new connection with a different board, uh, board rate, and that works. So um, I am already connected to the 40 gate, just like I said, with the console cable, or I can connect to the 40 gate using a GUI, a web GUI or graphic user interface. You can use any of these, um, any of these um, interfaces here. So the port one to five are part of the internal network that is already built in the device. And it has the default IP of 192.168.1.99. So if you connect to any of these five ports and connect your computer and make sure your computer is in the same network, it's going to work fine. Let me just show you my computer, the way it's set up. Right now, I have this secondary port here set up for that. Let me show you. Um, do, 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 where do I see that? No, not there. Network and internet, ethernet, and yes, as you can see, my ethernet, my NIC card is configured with 192.168.1.2. So I am in the same network as the 40 gate, so I'm able to access it. You can also use the 40 Explorer. It's an app that you have on your phone. You can detect the 40 gate from there and uh, do the initial config, or you can uh, adopt it in the 40 cloud. And right now, the way I have it set up is that my switch that I have here has these two interfaces, one and two, in two different VLANs connected to my home network. So those are going to be my WAN connections. So that's why I have two cables come in here and these two cables are connected to WAN1 and WAN2 on the 40 gate so I will not have any problem getting access to the internet actually when we get to the to the WAN part you're going to see that we already have IPs because the ports on the 40 gate already come ready to get the DHCP IP that's what we're going to find out so for me today what I'm going to use is the the GUI so I will go to the 192.168.1.99 
Once I do that, I have the certificate warning here. I'm going to bypass that. And by default, the login is admin without password. And now I'm inside the device and it's asking me to change my password. So the new password, I'm just going to make it simple. We will go with password and I'm going to repeat it, password. And I need to log in again in the device, admin password. So because I uh, didn't reboot it last time, I think I just unplug it from, from power directly. It's asking me to check the file system. I will do it later. Usually it doesn't have a big impact, but it's always good to do if you you see that warning and you, you have time for it. And on this device, I already had a license attached to it. So you're going to see that most some, some of the services will be activated. But for the design or the configurations that we're doing today, I don't need a license. So you may or may not have a license. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to work just fine. But in the future, when we create more videos on um, other or deeper configurations like antivirus, IPS, and things like, things like that, you might have a problem if you don't have a license. But for today, let's just go ahead and keep going. So um, I'm going to begin it asking if I have any config to migrate. No, I don't have anything. Don't show this and we do it later. He was asking me if I want to um, automatically upgrade my device or, or install patches. No, I don't want to do that. I usually like to do it manually to avoid disruptions. And uh, it's asking me to confirm that I denied or I declined the auto update. I'm going to confirm. And here it's asking me if I want my dashboard to be optimal or comprehensive. I like the comprehensive one because I have a lot of features showing. So I go with OK. And this is a video for the new OS 7.4. I don't want to see this. If you have time to see this, you can still do. And now we are inside the device, as you can see here. And that was very easy. And if we want to do some of our first config, as you can see right here, the name of the device is 40 71 f I would like to change that. I can just click here and go under Config uh, System Settings. And here I can change the name of my firewall and call it Man, man 40 gate. I can change that here in the GUI or I can go under the CLI. What I have to do will be config system global. And under system global, I need to set host name. And here I can give whatever name I want. Right now it's already set to main 40 gate. So we are fine. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I have access to the internet. If I go under network interfaces, you can see that our WAN1 and WAN2 already have IP addresses assigned to them. 141 on both, that's interesting. Okay, so I can just make sure that I have access or I have connectivity by doing exec, ping, um, Google, for example. Yes, we have access to the internet. That is great. And of course, if you come under interfaces, you can see that the internal um, VLAN switch that I told you about is here. And we have all these interfaces in it, one through five. I usually like to leave one alone because I can use these other ones on other um, virtual interfaces that I'm going to create. So I am going to remove them and just leave one and two. I also have on my side here, I have a MacBook Pro. This is going to be my test device. It has an Ethernet cable connected to it. And I couldn't connect it to the OBS. That's why I took some time to go live. But it is connected to my camera um, to my camera up here. So this is what you this is my actual uh, device that I have here. So I'm going to use it for test. First of all, let me disable Wi-Fi to make sure I am not connected to the internet. And the first small test that I want to do here is grab this cable. Because if we go back on the internal interface, you can see that I have this IP. I also have DHCP enabled on this interface here. And I have the port 1 and 2 connected to this interface. And the good thing is if we go under policy and object and we check firewall policy, there is already a built-in policy that allows internet, I mean internal to go to the internet, which is great. So from here, I usually like to 
to create an SD1 interface so that I can use it in the future and I can manage the failover or I can switch applications between 1.1 and 1.2. Today we're not going to go deep into SD1, but I'm going to create just that zone with 1.1 and 1.2 included. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I go under SD1. If you have it uh, not showing, if you don't have it showing here, you may, you may need to go under feature visibility. So I'm going to create a new member. And if you look at here, I only see when two. I don't see when one because it's already being used by the the firewall rule that I showed you. So here I'm going to use when two, and I'm going to go to delete that rule to get the new member added, like when one added. So I'm going to create a, un a new zone. I usually like to create my own zone, and I'm going to call it just internet because this one will be going out, and I'll go save this. And that's it. And then this one is when two. I'm going to give it a priority of five instead of one because this goes up down. So five is lower priority than one. So I'm going to save this in order for me to add when one. So I can just come and delete this policy. So I have when one available for SD1. So I'll go under SD1. And I'm going to come here and say new member. And the interface is going to be when one. And I'm going to add it to internet. And the priority will be one. And that's it. I'm going to hit OK. We have now the, those two interfaces under internet. So what I want to do is also create a new zone called internal. OK, and I'm going to add some members internal one will be the first member but by the end of this video we're going to add more members to this zone so I'll just hit OK and now I need to create some rule that will allow this traffic to go out to the internet so I'm going to go under firewall policy create new and the name I'm going to give to it will be internal let's see internal to internet Incoming interface is going to be the internal zone. Outgoing is going to be the internet SD1 zone. Source, everything coming through the interface is already good enough. Uh, destination, everything on the internet. Service, oh no, schedule always. Service, all services. And NAT is enabled and it should all be fine. So when I hit OK, if I go back to my computer, it should go out to the internet now. OK, it does. And that is good. So we have our SD1 zone con uh, configured. We have our internal zone configured. And we also have a firewall rule to bring it or to connect it to the outside world. And as you can see, we have, uh, let me refresh. Yes, we have some bytes here. So it's being used right now. Okay. Oh, you know what? That this is something I didn't notice before. We were hitting this here. I think maybe because it was using when to to go out. I don't know, but that, that's gonna remain a mystery. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about FortiLink. FortiLink is a proprietary management protocol from FortiNet. It's really good because it's going to allow me to use all my devices or to manage all my devices. The Forty switches, the Forty APs inside the 40 gate this 40 gate is going to be the center of my security fabric or my deployment here so when the device is um, new you're going to see that like in my case the port a and b here are already enabled for 40 link and if you look on my screen you can see a and b are under this aggregate port called 40 link so they're already 40 link I can add more ports. Like if I want a third port added to this, I can just add a new member. If I can add the, the port number five because it's right after these two here, I can add it to it. So let's go some. Let's go ahead and do some manipulations on the 40 link port, and I'm going to show you how important it is. So you can get it by coming under network interfaces and going in 40 link, or you can go under Wi-Fi switch and controller. And if you don't you don't see this option here, you may need to go under setting or system and feature visibility. Make sure switch and Wi-Fi controller are enabled. So if we go back here, we can select the 40 link interface. This is where I can add or remove port 
So I'm going to add the number five to this. So down here we have the IP address or the subnet for our um, for the link. I can leave it to 255, that's fine. And automatically authorize devices. This will make sure that if I connect a device like a new switch or a new AP, the it usually happens for switches for me. So uh, this is actually just for switches. If you look at here, it says um, 40 switches. So if I connect a new switch, it's going to be directly authorized. This is for security reasons. Because I'm in my lab right now, I don't have to worry about it. Any switch that I connect is going to be mine. Or even in production, if you don't have anybody bringing a switch or something, this is something you can enable or disable if you want to authorize manually. But in my case, I want to come here and authorize every time. So I'm going to... Oh no, I want to. I want the device to, or be, to be authorized automatically. So I'm going to leave it the way it is now. Split, uh, for the link split interface. Split interface is if you connect to many switches at the same time, but in my case, I don't. So I can disable this so that all the three interfaces are up at the same time. So I don't have to have only one. If I do this, if I enable this option, only one interface out of these three will be enabled. So I'll leave it like this. So the remaining uh, settings can be the same or the default, and then I'm going to hit apply. So from here, I should be able to connect my switch to my 40 gate. So what I'm going to do is use these cables here. Let me show you. So I'm going to use these two cables. I'll add a third one later on. So I'm going to connect it to the switch uh, number one, the 148F. I can use any of these ports. As you can see, if you look closely, there is a there is a 40 link. I can show it to you this way. This blue thing, it's a 40 link uh, sign. So it's already on these ports. But the thing I found is that any ports can can also detect 40 links. So I'm going to connect it to this one. Will go to the port 47. The other one can go to 48. And if I add a third cable on the number five. I can, no, that was 49. So I can connect this one to 48. <coughs> okay, so if we come back here and we refresh, we should actually see the switch. But I also want to add just this other switch already. So uh, let's go ahead and do I have another cable over here? I think I'm running out of small cables. Okay, it's here. So I'm going to grab this and connect it to the port 45. So the second switch will also be detected at the same time. So now we have our switches connected. If we come back to the screen and I refresh this page, you can see that A, B and internal 5 are now green because they are up and connected to the switch. And if I go back and hit manage 40 switches, we should see these two switches online that is a good thing because 40 link already exchanged the information between the switch and the 40 gate now inside the 40 gate i can see my switches and from here i can do many things i can change the names of my switches sometimes it takes a moment to be online that's why you can see the second switch is still offline here um, but we can go ahead and try to change the name or change the name on the first switch I'm not able to change it in a GUI here. Usually I go in the CLI. So let's go ahead and go in the CLI to change the name of that switch. I can open my secure CRT over here and log in with admin password. I like this one here because you can see it better. It's kind of, it's bigger. So what I want to do is config um, switch controller, manage switch. If I do get, you can see all the switches I'm managing right now. This is the first, that's the second. So the command I need to do is rename. And then I'll give it the serial number of the switch I want to rename. And then I'll do two. This one I'll call it main 40 switch. And by doing this, the name is going to be changed inside the device itself. So it's going from the 40 gate and managing and changing the host name on the device. So it's asking me to confirm. I'll just say yes. And my switch will be offline for a moment, but it's going to be online really soon. So I want to do the same thing for the second switch. Rename the serial number 
two. This one, the second switch will be in my garage, so I'll call it the garage uh, 40 switch. And I confirm. All right. Uh, one thing that I want to change from here is the the admin timeout. So configure system global. I'm going to change set admin timeout to 480. So it's not going to kick me out in my lab of here. So that's it. I'll hit end. Let's go back to the GUI and refresh this page. They will probably be offline, but we'll see. Oh, they're online already. What is this thing here? Not registered. Is this one registered? Yeah, they, it's also not registered. But that's something I can do later. I need to register my switches. I'll do it um, offline. So we have my two switches here. They're all up. They're both up and uh, ready to go. And if I go under port or 40 switch ports, I can see all the different ports from my switches. As you can see, the garage has 10 port, the main switch has uh, 52 ports, so I can manage everything from here. So the next step is to create our VLANs. We're going to um, segregate our network in different uh, small networks with different VLAN IDs, and that's for my home use here. And I showed you at the beginning what we're going to configure, and I can show it to you right now. So this is going to be, these are going to be my different VLANs. So I'm going to create right now these four VLANs here. That's what I need for the, for the moment. Or maybe I can do these two because I'm live and I don't want to take all my time. So I'll do, I'll do these two first and the AP VLAN 32. And then we can go and set these VLANs on my port and keep going. So to create VLAN, it's very easy. Just like I said, everything is centrally managed. You just need to go in the 40 gate and go under 40 switch VLANs. This is where we have these default VLANs here that come with the device. These are for um, for management and for NAC, for example. So we're going to, we're not going to talk about NAC or network access control here, but this is a very important uh, feature to have in your network. I'm going to talk about it in a different video, but for now, let me just create my um, customized VLAN and we're going to get them going. So the first one will be the AP VLAN 32. As I said, this is going to be for my access point. And the VLAN ID for this is going to be number 32. And it's going to be a LAN. And the IP address is, I think my my uh, mouse is acting up a little bit. OK, so 10.132.0.1 slash 24. I can create an address, um, an address object. That's fine. I can ping. And I also need to enable security fabric so that my devices are detected. I don't think I need anything else beside the DHCP server for my APs. And one other thing is to go under advanced and make sure the wireless controller is set for the, the IP of the 40 gate. So I think that's it. And I can go ahead and hit, oh, I can also authorize devices automatically from here. So I don't have to, okay, that's perfect. And I need to hit okay. And I can also create a second VLAN, the main 35. The VLAN ID will be 35. The actual IP will be 10.135.0.1 slash 24. And I need HTTP, I need pings. I need everything else because this is my main VLAN. So I need to have um, all the accesses I need, even SNMP as well. Authorized devices, maybe not, but DHCP can be enabled. And um, that's it. I'm going to hit OK. And the last VLAN will be the VLAN Protect 36. 36, the IP will be 10.136.0.1 slash 24. And all I need to do is maybe ping only. I don't need anything else. And I need a, a DHCP server. And that's it. One thing I'd like to do on the main VLAN is make sure that uh, my DHCP server starts at, let's say, 33. Because from 2 to 32, I want to assign it manually to some 
main devices in my home network. So we have our VLAN configured. What I want to test with you is make sure that the MacBook that I have here is going to be part of the VLAN number 35, for example, and I'm going to connect it to one of the ports on the switch. So let me go ahead and move this cable from the port number two and connect it to the port number 25 on the main switch, for example. So as you can see, I lost connectivity here. So what I want to do to configure the port 25 to be an access port for the, for the VLAN 35, I need to go under, under 40 switch ports and look for the port number 35, or, or no, 25. So let's go all the way to 25. As you can see, it's green, uh, unlike the others. So what I want to do is change the native VLAN from whatever it is now, the default for the link to 35. So I'm going to hit main 35 and hit OK. If we go back to the device, we should first of all receive an IP address. Right now you see that I don't have an IP, I have an IPPA here because I was not seeing any DHCP server. I can go ahead and hit the renew, but it's going to happen itself. Yes, it happened. And now I have 10.135.0.33, that's that's which is fine, but I don't have access to the internet. And the reason is because I don't have my main VLAN 35 added to the internal zone. So I need to go under network, NFSs, scroll all the way down to the internal zone and make sure all my new VLANs I created are part of this zone as well. So AP32 is there, VLAN 35 and VLAN 36 and close. Once I do this and hit OK, my device should be able to go out to the internet, which it's able to now. All right, so we are good there. You were able to see how I changed the native VLAN on the switch port. So now I need to go to the final step or the next step is to configure our access point and make sure they are part of our network. So what I want to do then is make sure I have the ports configured for it. I'm going to use the port number one on the first switch and the port number one on the second switch to connect my access points. So I'm going to go under Wi-Fi and switch controller, go under switch port. And the port number one, because it's going to be assigned to the AP, I need to make sure the native VLAN is the AP VLAN 32. And I also need to make sure that all the other APs, I mean, all the other VLANs are authorized. So main and protect will be authorized on this interface here. Uh, I will hit apply. So this is going to work like a trunk in, in a Cisco world. So this is going to allow many VLANs to go through. 32 will not have a tag, but 35 and 36 will have some tags on it. I'm going to show you how I can assign these different VLANs to the SSIDs. So that was for the port number one on the garage switch. I'm going to do the same thing on the port number one on the on the main switch. And authorized, I have 35 and 36. Okay, so with that done, I can go ahead and connect my access points. So this is the first access point. This one, I can connect it to the number one on the garage switch. As you can see, this one has two five gig ports. Actually, I'm going to make a specific video on the 40 APs, even the 40 switch as well. I'm going to make them, I mean, I'm going to make other videos uh, specifically focused on these other devices. But in my case, I don't have PoE. Okay, I do, no, I do have PoE on this switch. But um, since I have a five gig here and this is Wi-Fi E, I don't want to have a bottleneck in my network. So I'm going to make sure that I have a port of at least five gig or even 10 gig to support my device here. So that's why I'm going to have a little PoE injector with a 10 gig that I'll connect here. That is going to be when I do the deployment, I'll show it to you. So make sure you, you stick around for that. And also if you are studying for the CCNA, if you want to get into this world of networking and security, I have a CCNA course available on kbtrans.com. Let me show you the the website here. Oh, oh, not that. That's not what I want. So I want this. And if you go on kbtrainings.com, that's where you're going to see the CCNA course. And it's there available for you. You can 
you can go from zero to engineer and learn everything you need to learn to go take and pass the CCNA exam, not only for the exam, but also for your career, because it's going to teach you all the basic notions of networking, security, cloud, wireless, and everything you need to be able to do a career in this field. So kbtrains.com, that's where the course is. So let's go back here. I'm going to connect this AP and it's going to come online. Let's put it up here. So the second AP is right there. I have the cable. So this one I'm going to connect down here. This is the 40AP431F, or U431F, and the U stands for unifi um, universal because this one does UTM or universal threat management or, yes, yeah, threat management. So I'm going to connect this one to the port number one on the switch, on the main switch. Okay, it is connected. Put it down here. All right. As you can see, this is coming up online. And this one should be turning on really soon. Yes, it does. So we'll give them some time and automatically they should be able to be detected by uh, my 40 gate and also automatically authorized. Just like I said, um, I made my configuration in a way that I don't have to manually come and authorize it. So let's refresh this page here. The APs are still coming up online. Let's take a look at the chat. Thank you everybody for being online and if you have any questions, leave it. And if you are watching this after, yeah, you can catch me online um, usually Sundays, but today I did it on Monday morning. I think it's a good time for me to go live because it's much easier. Let's see. What do you see right now? Uh, okay. Okay. All right. I thought you were seeing a different screen. But yes, thank you so much for hanging out with me here in a Tuesday morning. I think early in the morning is good for me to go live right before I go to work. So I can do a live for like an hour between like uh, seven and eight and uh, be done with it so let's go back to our device okay i still don't have the ips yet i still oh okay they're here oh because they are automatically authorized i was thinking i was waiting for a little notification over here so as you can see this ap is already authorized and it's green it's online the other one is offline because it was just authorized so it's gonna take a moment Oh, look, connected via, this one doesn't show AP32. Let's make sure the port is set for AP32. Yes, one is AP32. Okay, it should be okay. So let's give it give it a moment. Okay, it's up. Both of them are up now. Uh, what I like usually to do is change the name. This one is in the garage, so I can go here and right click, edit, and change the name to say garage AP or 40 AP. I have a new firmware here, but I don't want to upgrade now, but you, it, it's always good to do it if you if you want to. So I'll go to the second one and also change the name to, let's say, main AP, maybe, main 40 AP. And that is good. So we have our 40 APs. And the next thing you're going to notice is that once you connect your APs, new 40 AP profiles are going to be created depending on the model of the AP that you have. So I have two profiles here, one for the 431G, the other one for the U431F. So inside, we're going to make some changes. I'll, we'll come back to this later. But let's go ahead and create our SSIDs first. And the first SSID I want to create is for the guest. And this is going to be, just like I said at the beginning, a tunnel going directly from the AP through the 40 gate out to the internet. So it doesn't have to be mixed to our uh, wired traffic or it doesn't have to be connected to the LAN, uh, to the wired LAN. So what I want to do here is give it a name. I will call it just guest, um, guest SSID. I'm going to call it lab. Um, so, uh oh, I hit the wrong button here. So let's go ahead and go 
back there under SSID, create new. I think my, I think my, um, my mouse lost its configuration because I'm, I was supposed to copy, but now it's kicking me out. So guest, um, guest SSID. Mm, lab. So I meant to copy this and I'm going to leave it as a tunnel. IP address, I can give it anything I want here. So I can do 10.250.0.1 slash 24. And I'm going to create an address object. And I can only ping from here. And I, ne I need a DHCP server. Everything else should be leave, uh, left like this. And I need, uh, oh, I need the SSID itself. This is the name of the network I'm creating. And this is the name of the SSID that is going to be broadcasted. So I'm going to put guest SSID lab. And then I will do a password. I'll give you the password, just password. And in my next videos, I'm going to show you how you can set up like a captive portal if you want to do that. If you want to, uh, you want your users to accept uh, some kind of disclosure to provide the email, the phone number or anything. We're going to go that in, uh, to do that in future videos. Um, if, or if you want to use Radius for authentication or anything like that. So t today we're just going to keep it simple with a password. And that's it. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to create the other two. I will create a protect SSID lab. And uh, because I'm going to change it for my home network, so it's not going to stay the same. So this one will be... Please enter at most 15 characters. What do I have here? Okay. Or I'll just leave it like this. Protect SSID. So this one will be a bridge, which means that it's going to be hauled back to my LAN or to my wired connections and will be integrated to one of these networks. So that's why I'm going to give it a VLAN ID as you're going to see. So this one is protect SSID and I'm going to give it... The SSID name is going to be my my mouse is really awkward today. Maybe the batteries are down. Okay, protect SSID, and uh, I'm going to give it a new password. Oh, I'm going to set the password, just password, and I need to change the VLAN ID here to 36. That's it. I can call it protect 36. We'll see. That's fine. So I'm, I'm going to hit OK. That's it. I'm going to create a new one. Or I can clone this one. Let me just go and clone. Why am I not able to clone? Anyway. OK. Create new SSID. I'm going to call this one main 35 SSID. It's going to be a bridge as well. The name of the... I mean, this ID is going to be the same as here. So, same. And then, security with password. And the VLAN ID is going to be 35. Let's go back to this other one. I want it to be protect SSID. Yes, that's different. I thought I don't need this. So, we are good. So, now we have our SSID created. We need to go in the 40 AP profiles to make sure that we attached the profile to the SSIDs the way we want it to. So let's, uh, the way we want it to be broadcasted. Let's go down to the 40 AP profiles and the first one will be the 431G. If I go in here, the main thing I have to do for the 2.4 gig, I can go down here and assign the SSIDs manually. I can do everything or let's say I want the guest to have only the 2.5 so I can just leave guest here and scroll down to the 5 gig where I can add the other two so to the 5 gig I can add man and 35 so and then I, I can hit okay that's it it's already linked and these SSIDs are going to be broadcasted so I can go to the second one and do the same thing I scroll down. This is for 5G. I can scroll down and oh, 5 gigahertz. I don't want to confuse or get it confused with the 5G. 
the protocol. So I go with uh, man and protect ID or SSID. And then for the 2.4 gigahertz, I will take manually the guest only and hit OK. So at this point, let me connect my uh, my computer that I have here to these SSIDs. So first of all, I'm going to unplug the wired connection and we're going to lose access to the internet. Let's go under Wi-Fi and look for the guest, for example. You went to my home network, but I want to connect to the guest SSID lab. And the password is password. Let me make sure it's correct. Yes, and I'm going to join. Let's go here and see what happens. First of all, I should be able to get an IP. Let's see if I do. Yes, I do have an IP for the guest network. And the reason why I'm not able to ping Google is because I am not connected. I mean, I don't have a firewall rule allowing this. So what I want to do is go under, go under my internal zone interface or internal zone, not zone interface. Come here and make sure the guest SSID is added to it. Once I do that and hit OK, let's go back to the device. After a few seconds, we should be able to go online. Yes, now we are able to ping uh, Google, which is good. So yeah, I think that's it. So if I go down here and look at um, Wi-Fi, I can look at the Wi-Fi clients. And this is my MacBook that is connected. I can even add some more devices. Let me make sure my iPhone is also connected, let's say, to protect. Um, let's go and do Wi-Fi and change it to, where is protect? Okay, I'll do protect SSID. It's connected directly. Okay, maybe it was connected there before. So I'll grab my other phone and connect it to uh, this one will be connected to the main SSID. So just a moment. Okay, so main 35 SSID password. Okay, and I am connected. So if I come here and refresh this page, you can see that I have three devices, just like the three devices that I just connected to my network. And if I go under manage switches, my switches are there. And for the client switches, I can see the different uh, clients that are connect, uh, wired to the network. This one is down for now. It was up before. And if I go on the Wi-Fi client, that's where I see the Wi-Fi client. And one good thing about 40 link, just like I said, is that all the three interfaces are up at the same time, which means that with my devices here, I do have access to the internet. Of course, everything grows through the, the three ports that I have here. I'm going to show you. Everything is taking these three ports here. So I can unplug any of them. Let me show it to you. If I go if I go back here, so I can come here and unplug, let's say the port five. So let's say this cable is down for some reasons. I just lost a single packet because apparently that session was using this cable here. So that's why I lost some I lost the ping, but I'm back online using these other ones. I can unplug the port A. Uh, let me show you. I can unplug the port A. And I didn't lose anything um, because it's using this one here. So let me put back the port. But if I unplug this one, everything is going to be down, of course. If I unplug I unplug the, the, the A, there's no way to go out, of course. So I can put back A and we should be up in no time once the switch is up so that's why when you have 
when you have the the ports, make sure that one of them at least is working. And if you have three of them, the sessions are going to be split between the three because it's r just an um, an aggregate like LACP or or just like uh, what is the other one? Um, I forgot the other uh, LACP. Um, I forgot the other uh, port aggregation protocol. But yeah, so it it works really well for failover, and uh, that's something I wanted to test for you. I'm going to put back all these ports here. And um, another thing I want to show you is if we come back here and I go under the security fabric, you're going to see how easy it is for me to see all my network from here. Now it's building the topology, like the physical topology. Yes, this is it. So as you can see, I have my main switch over here or my main uh, new generation firewall. And it's connected to the switch, the two switches. Why is this one dotted? Anyway, so I have the two APs and I have four devices. And uh, yeah, as I can see, as you can see, this is my this is my iPhone and uh, all the other ones. If I do update now, it may change a little because I think the devices should be behind the APs. Um, it might take a while to get the whole thing, but at least you can see the design of your security fabric. You can see how you are connected to the internet and what is doing the security and the switching inside your network. That's all guys. This is what I wanted to show you today. And um, I just made a full deployment of the 40 gate, 40 switches and 40 APs. And we were able to see um, 40 link in action by adopting all the devices or managing all the devices in the 40 gate. That is a very good thing. And uh, yeah, if you like these kind of videos, make sure you like the video and you subscribe. Let me take a quick look at the chat here. And if you are, is when one available for internet? Yes, when one is available, Jibril. I just saw your question here. New subscriber here, enjoying the content. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Roland. And thank you, everybody. All right, I think that's all for now. And if you have any comments, leave it below. We will um, we'll be together next time I go live. It might be Sunday or next Monday. But uh, meanwhile, I'm going to show you some other project here, like uh, my lab rack over there. I have a I have a rack in uh, in the back. So I'm still uh, I'm still. Oh no, that's not what you're saying. So just like I said, I have a rack over there, and I have devices that I'm I'm unboxing and things like that. My rack will have many devices on it, including Fortinet, um, Ubiquity, the Unify that I'm going to remove from my home network will be in the lab. And um, what else? Some checkpoint and some Cisco on there so we can do those labs together. Um, thank you, guys. It's been an hour almost. So I think we're good for today. And uh, like and subscribe if you want to miss anything. If you want Facebook, follow the page. Thank you so much and take care. Bye.